What created this so-called beef between Haitians and Dominicans? It isn't really a beef that was from the civilians. This is more of a political thing. See, if we go back to the 1800s, there was a Haitian president by the name of Jean-Pierre Boyer, right? Jean-Pierre Boyer, in order for Haiti to become independent, which we had a debt over our head of probably to France, probably in the millions, a couple of mil. So his idea was pimp out the east side of the island and make them pay our debt to France. So in this, what happened was basically his intention wasn't to make DR like, okay, we are all one. His intention, his intention was to exploit, exploit and enslave. So now what happens is after the occupation, you know, and during the occupation, sometime down the line, you know, Haitians as well as Dominic Dominicans rose up against uh, Boyer and basically kicked them out. So with that happening, later down the line, it comes Faustin Sululuk. He comes into play and tries to do the same. But what ends up happening with him, he ends up losing the battle. See, see, this is the part of Haitian history that is not talk, that is not given to most Haitians today. Most Haitians think that there's a problem, there's a race problem in Dominican Republic whatsoever with Haitians and stuff like that. And that's not even the case because when you go to DR, you pretty much see people that are as my complexion, even darker, that are Dominican. And hint to this is the Parsley Massacre. See, the Parsley Massacre wasn't about race. It was about nationality. And there's a difference between nationality and race. Hence why Rafael Trujillo had the, the term that was supposed to be pronounced in, you know, most Haitians have an accent. And that's why he was able to distinguish whether it was if the person was Haitian or Dominican because you couldn't really tell them apart. As far as Trujillo is concerned, he was part mulatto, Haitian mulatto. So you can kind of, I mean, and then I know some people going to be like, yeah, Haitian mulatto. I mean, we already know how that, that, how Haitians have coexisted in Haiti with mulattoes. It hasn't been a good experience. So I don't want to get too much into that. I will say this is where the beef sprang from. Now you have later down the line, after the 18, 18, 1850s and stuff like that, you have later down the line with the whole Rafael Trujillo thing. So you have two invasions that happened from the Haitian side, and that definitely led into bad standings whatsoever with the DR side, you know? So when Trujillo did what he did, this was out of, okay, retaliation for what transpired. So now let's think about this on a human standpoint. And I'm not trying to uh, take away from the atrocity that was committed by Rafael Trujillo. But you have to think in a normal human mind. If someone betrays you, right? I want to say it's the Haitian the Dominicans, right? Because there's going to be sympathizers, you know, whatsoever on both ends. Think as a human being. If someone tries to fuck your business up, right? Someone tries to take your freedom away. Someone just comes into your house, shits all over you. Are you going to forgive that person? Are you gonna are you gonna forgive that person? Are you gonna let that person slide? Most people wouldn't. If you basically came through and you did all types of heinous acts to me, whatsoever, you abused me, whatever, you know what I'm saying? If they, you know, rape, whatever. My wife, whatever. Are you gonna forgive someone for that? So you have to also think for us Haitians, how would these people feel? Now you have not only that that transpired. You have propaganda being pumped by politicians. See, the thing is, the beef that exists, that has existed, is not a, a created, that has not been created by civilians. The beef that exists be cre came from our governing bodies, our politicians. So, in reality, the so-called beef that exists definitely needs to be researched. Because that way we can have an understanding to see why there is conflict. Deuces.